Hello and welcome back to another episode of From the Workshop with me, your host, Brandon Hart. I am here not in the Nimblelink nerd lair, but in a remote lair whose location will never be revealed. But I am actually going to be joined by uh, Dave Smith from Get Wireless via a Zoom video conference. So we're gonna try here in the age of COVID to see how we can make this work and still produce those videos for you. Uh, this time, what we're going to talk about is the idea of machine learning and artificial intelligence in IoT and in your custom IoT devices and solutions. Is it science fiction? Does it make sense to do? Is this something that we'll get to in 10 years? Find out soon on this episode of From the Workshop. That's right, AI, machine learning, all these things that science fiction books are written about, it's here. And uh, we recently did a 10-week web series called uh, Successfully Pushing Intelligence to the Edge. Uh, this was a joint video uh, series between Nimblelink and Get Wireless. And so my co-host for uh, that web series was Dave Smith. Dave specifically talked on one of those videos about the idea of AI and machine learning and uh, whether it makes sense to kind of incorporate that into IoT solutions. So I thought we'd bring him on to from the workshop and give him a chance to elaborate on that a little bit. Maybe ask him a few more questions than what we covered in those videos. By the way, if you haven't seen those videos, check out the information in the description. There's a lot of information that we went through. Again, this was 10 weeks of video content that we put together for uh, IoT device developers just like you. So with that, Dave, welcome to the From the Workshop video series. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell the people who you are. Good to be here. Uh, my name is Dave Smith. I'm VP of IoT Solutions at Get Wireless. Um, that's a value-added distributor here in the Twin Cities. My primary role is to uh, create solutions from different components and sources and put them together and package them up that we would then sell to our customers. So it's very important for me to be able to create working IoT solutions that generally span from endpoint sensors through communication equipment and up to cloud applications. And that can be challenging sometimes, but it's kind of fun. And the AI topic is some of those fun things that. Uh, Dave was really kind of the one that came on to the From the Workshop, or sorry, the uh, Successfully Pushing Intelligence to the Edge video series that we did uh, and talked about AI. So can you sort of recap what it is you, you went through and kind of the main ideas for, for what you were talking about in that video? So the idea of using AI and machine learning throughout an IoT system is actually a real valid one. And you have opportunities at every layer. Uh, in the cloud, obviously, we've all heard of Siri and Cortana and Hey Google. Um, there are a lot of cloud AI engines out there, but then you can also use machine learning right at the very edge and even the, the tiniest of sensors. And then in between in your communication channel, you have opportunities to use machine learning there as well. So in our uh, series that we did, we kind of went through and broke down, what are your opportunities in the cloud, right? What is out there? Um, what does Google provide? What does Amazon provide? What does Microsoft provide in their AI engines and their platforms? And you know how you would kind of use each one in which kinds of use cases and things like that. And we also told you how to uh, actually use machine learning in your sensors. And then for most people, they did not know this, we actually showed you how to use machine learning in the communication channel itself. That a good enough recap, you think? Did I forget anything? <laughs> I think that'll do it. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I got to ask. Um, it's it's a, it's a fun, you know, uh, uh, idea. Um, is it real? I mean, is 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 it practical? Does it make sense to actually incorporate any kind of machine learning or AI into your IoT solution? Um, and by that, I mean. Um, does it make sense to actually put it into the, the tiny little devices that go into the field? 
I understand the cloud has a lot of capabilities, uh, but, but what about the actual devices that are in the field? Is that practical at all? Oh, absolutely. In fact, it's more than likely that you have already used such devices in your everyday life. Uh, for example, if you have a um, Android phone and you say, hey, Google, um, that, that little bit of machine learning intelligence in the phone actually does not run uh, on your main processor. It runs on a little tiny auxiliary processor. And they do that so that when the, bat when the uh, phone is asleep, the battery isn't drained by having the main processor constantly running just listening for, hey, Google. So they have this little teeny tiny processor that's the equivalent of something you would find in you know, a simple temperature sensor um, running inside your phone. It doesn't use much power, and so your phone can always be listening and not cost you a lot of battery life. So yes, you've seen this all over. You may not have encountered yet the machine learning techniques used in communication channels. That's still a growing uh, technology area, but certainly in the cloud, if you've ever said, uh, hey Siri, or hey Google, um, Alexa, you know, you know that you've, uh, you've used those. <laughs> I'm just laughing at how many devices we probably just set off. Um, so <laughs> we, for, for the rest of the video, we will avoid uh, trying to say any of those wake words or, or wake phrases. Uh, Wait, sorry, a everybody. Alexa. Or BMW, hold it to Dave Smith. Okay, I got that now. Oh, this is great. This is going well. Yeah. Um, so potentially in editing, we bleeped all of those things out so that we did not set off devices. But uh, uh, apologies if that happened for anybody. Exactly so, yeah. So um, so with that being said, then Dave, um, I, I have to ask if this is in fact as practical as you make it sound like it is. Why are we hearing more about this? I mean, it, it, is this just not something that people have thought about or, or are the resources just really not available or accessible or, or why is this not already a thing? Well, actually it is a thing. Um, and it has been widely adopted, especially in the cloud. Most uh, commercial um, companies are using AI in one form or another to track user preferences. If you've ever gone on to say Netflix and had suggestions as to you know what videos or movies you might like to see, that's AI powered. Um, so most of the cloud AI stuff has actually been around and is actually percolating now into the nooks and crannies. Most of the basic things dealing with marketing and customer satisfaction and things like that, those have long been using AI. If you're starting to talk about, okay, I have an industrial system and I want to be monitoring, say, a manufacturing line or something like that, or a warehouse, and then you have sensors there, um, even many companies there, such as Amazon, are using AI in the background to do things like predictive maintenance, um, workplace safety to avoid accidents and things like that. At a consumer level, you may not realize these things are going on, uh, but they are in the cloud. Huh, okay, so in the cloud then. Um, so we're not really talking about putting AI or machine learning into our little 8-bit microcontroller powered devices then, right? We're, th this is more like the, the sensors are feeding data up into the cloud and in the cloud, these big you know, server farms and racks and racks of computers with all the little blinky lights, those are all doing all the computations for AI and machine learning. We are not talking about actually doing these on your little sensor nodes that are going in the field, right? We actually are. We actually are. Um, you know, in the cloud, you've got the big three, like right? Google, Amazon, Microsoft. There's a host of other uh, specific kind of AI platforms. For example, there's, there's one that allows you to send it pictures of dogs and it'll identify the dog for you um, that uh, make it really easy to do things like that. But at the very edge where you have a tiny sensor with a small MCU and a limited amount of memory, and of course a battery you have to be very careful of, you can still run machine learning there. For those of you who, are, who know machine learning, you know that there are two phases to it. There's a learning phase, and then there's what's called an inference phase. In learning, it usually takes a lot of computing process, process or power. You need to run that usually in the cloud or with some large processors not in the cloud. And you end up with a thing called a model. 
And then you do machine learning inference using this model that uh, actually does the quote machine learning and, and implements the intelligence in the device. Well, as it turns out, sure, the learning part needs to be done in the cloud. But once you have the model, those models can be made almost as small as you like, and those can be put in very tiny MCUs to enable things like voice recognition, image recognition, sorting, um, predictive uh, values on things. Um, one thing that, that machine learning is especially good at is called time series prediction, where if it's scanning, say, a temperature over time and maybe a couple other variables, it can have learned in the cloud from the learning phase that when these things start doing these, uh, going these directions, um, it means something is about to break, for example. Executing that model uh, doesn't take a lot of power. And in fact, usually the trade-off of the benefit you get by using machine learning there versus how you would have to do it in your own software more than pays for itself. So yeah, the, the, the hard part happens in the cloud, but the, the easy part, the little stuff can actually be put into a little device that might have, I don't know, a cellular connection in it to send that data up to the cloud. That all can happen in those, those tiny little low power devices, huh? Absolutely. In fact, if you'd like to have a couple of sources to, to get uh, into this, look up TinyML uh, on the internet. Uh, another company uh, is called Edge Impulse. Uh, they implement a lot of TinyML and they help developers start using machine learning uh, in what we call highly constrained devices, devices that don't have a lot of computing power or memory. Does, does putting machine learning into individual IoT devices in the field uh, make sense for all use cases or are there specific reasons why companies who are developing solutions that only do specific types of things should consider it for? I mean, it's, it's still not like generally a good idea for everybody who's making an IoT device to, to consider MI, or AI and machine learning, right? Actually, you know, I think they should. And in fact, um, one of the predictions I've made is that in two or three years, if you're an engineer and you're set about to develop a, a, some sort of sensor that's gonna be deployed, an IoT device that will be widely deployed, you're not gonna really think so much about what processor should I use and maybe if there's an operating system on it or not and how much memory and things like that. What you're gonna be doing is selecting which machine learning models you want to incorporate into that device to give it the intelligence that you're looking for to do its job. Um, that is definitely the direction where endpoint devices are going right now. So if you step back and you say, I have a device and you're putting it out in the field, most of the time you're trying to get information from that device. Okay, Brandon, as you talked about in, in our series, when it came to the cellular side, um, you often have to be careful how much data you send back, right? Yep. That can clearly impact the um, price performance of your solution. So what happens is using machine learning, making a device more intelligent, it may not have to communicate as often or as much um, as it otherwise would because it can handle a lot of the low level issues. So for example, let's say you were monitoring a refrigeration unit and you had vibration and temperature and maybe uh, air pressure or humidity, right? By just looking at temperature, well, you know if it's cold enough, right? And if you're looking at temperature changing, you know if it's getting warmer or colder. But if you include vibration and humidity in there, you can tell is the environment correct for what I want to put in it, which is a completely different question to answer and would normally have to be done in the cloud. Instead, you can have a device that just says, environment's okay, for example, or through vibration, maybe count every time somebody walks in and out of the, uh, the enclosure, right? Mm -hmm. Or if the pump is about to die. There's all these things that you can do is when you start adding more than one sensor into an endpoint, it's machine learning that ties those all together. So I'm getting the sense that this would be a way to successfully push intelligence to the edge. 
uh, but yeah, no, this is great. This is great. So, um, all right, last question. Uh, I know we're all thinking it, so uh, let's just go ahead and, and ask uh, and address the elephant in the room. Does increasingly adding machine learning and AI into more and more devices in the world uh, speed up the rate at which we bring about the apocalypse? <laughs> um, maybe, actually. No, but what it will do is it'll make the internet greener, um, for one thing, because you're not, it's not consuming as much energy, transmitting as much data. And when you start talking about, you know, 50 or pick, pick whatever billions number of devices you think are going to be in the IoT world in, you know, a few years, and you look at the energy consumption, those are going to have not only, of course, themselves, but that'll be mostly battery, we hope. Um, but the network supporting them, you know, talk about energy consumption. If you can really reduce that, then um, you're saving a lot of energy, making the internet greener. And that actually leads me to the third place where you can use AI and machine learning in an IoT system. You have the opportunities in the cloud, and you have those the three big ones and a whole bunch of other platforms out there um, in the cloud. And then you have a machine learning inference that you can run on the edge. In the middle though, you can use machine learning inference to actually optimize your communication channel. And the way you would do this is you would, you would take a snapshot of all the data going across this channel. It doesn't have to be a lot. And then use that information as learning data and do machine learning in the cloud and develop a model. Now, if you put that into the software that is actually sending and receiving the data of the communication channel, you can reduce the amount of data that you send by usually about 80%. Uh, there's a company called Atom Beam, and they're in Silicon Valley, they're a startup, and they actually have this technology. It's pretty awesome. This, you have absolutely lossless data reduction. It's not compression. Um, it doesn't use compression algorithms at all. Um, and in addition, when you do this, you actually get a security benefit because the data going across the wire is not even related to the actual data. So there's nothing to decrypt or anything like that. So it's called data obfuscation. And so using machine learning on that communication channel can save you just right there, 70, 80% easily. Awesome, Dave, I can tell that you have a ton of information and I, you are a wealth of knowledge on this particular topic. So uh, there's no possibility we could extract all of that good information from you in the format that we have here for from the workshop. But if people do have thoughts or questions or, or just wanna throw their IoT application out and see what you think about uh, how they should proceed with getting started, how can they get a hold of you? How can they reach you? Oh, well, sure. Um, they can get hold of me at Get Wireless. My email address there is dsmith, all one word, at getwirelessllc.com. Happy to take any emails and answer them the best I can. But I'd also refer you to our Successfully Pushing Intelligence to the Edge uh, workshop, the AI episode, where we did go into a lot more detail uh, on the things I mentioned here. And so between that and an email to me, I hopefully think we can get your your questions answered. Excellent. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us on this episode of From the Workshop. Uh, anybody who does have additional thoughts or comments, uh, please feel free to put your comments down below in the YouTube comments. We do read and respond to all of those there. Uh, please like and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. Uh, feel free to shoot us an email. If you'd rather not put it in comments, you can certainly shoot us an email to workshop at nimblelink.com and, uh, and then join us for future episodes of From the Workshop. Until that time, of course, you know, we want you to have fun building. <laughs>